When I was a kid, I used to love being on the swings. I had the power to make myself go higher and higher. And as a kid, not understanding physics, let alone a sense of danger, I wondered if I could make it go all the way around. Well, last year, I celebrated my 53rd birthday in my 53rd country, Costa Rica. They have a zipline park called Extremo. Well, as you can probably guess, I have a flair for the dangerous side of life. I've ziplined in Mexico, El Salvador, Puerto Rico, and the Philippines. This place had something called the Extreme Swing. A swing? A 390-foot thing in the air swing? I was like, shut up and take all my money. So they take you to the top of this huge crane and stand you on the very edge. So I'm standing there alone on this precipice, my heart excitedly beating a new pattern, waiting for them to release the trap door. Seconds later, the bottom fell out, and I was having the most exhilarating time swinging through the air hundreds of feet in the sky. I got butterflies in my stomach right now just thinking about it. Well, the year before that, I was standing on a completely different precipice. This time, there was a stabbing pain in my stomach, a sharp ache in my heart. Tears filled my eyes, making it difficult for me to focus on my cell phone, which was telling me that I had lost $100,000 in one day. At that moment, it felt like the ground had crumbled beneath my feet, leaving me free falling through a trap door without a bungee cord to save me. I sat on my couch alone, paralyzed and crying for three hours. The only thing I could do to soothe the pain was listen to the song Change the World by Eric Clapton and Babyface. Watching that video on repeat over and over. How could this happen? I teach people how to make money in the stock market and how to create generational wealth. I've impacted over 10,000 students. Would I be able to teach and impact even more because of this miscalculation? And how could I talk to my clients knowing I had this huge secret that I had never publicly shared before? Hours later, I had to start thinking of the things that I teach, such as you're only supposed to invest with money you're willing to lose, right? Yeah. Is that the last $100,000 you're ever going to get? No. Well, did you die? No. Well, all right then. So I had to start on a new journey with myself because maybe I wasn't the problem. Maybe the way I was looking at it was. So I challenged myself to explore my relationship with money, to embrace a more holistic definition of wealth. Because even though Webster's Dictionary defines wealth as an abundance of valuable material possessions or resources, could it be that that was wrong? So I started studying wealth and millionaires. I read about Elon Musk and how he became a millionaire back in 99 with PayPal. But then I read a story about David Lee Edwards, who became a millionaire two years after Elon by winning the Kentucky jackpot of $28 million. But he ended up penniless and living in a storage shed five years later. That's when I really started doubting the definition of wealth because how can you reach a milestone of wealth and end up broke? 
Then I read where one millionaire said, the true wealthy know that your net worth has nothing to do with what's in your bank account. Rather, your net worth depends on what you have access to. After that, I read the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. And even though nine of the 24 books I've written are about investing and making money, that was when I learned that there's four types of wealth, financial, social, time, and physical. But it wasn't until I studied Jeff Bezos and Amazon that everything finally clicked. Typing www.amazon.com leads to Amazon for shopping. Typing www.relentless.com does the same. That's important because if we pigeonhole Jeff Bezos into being just a billionaire, we fall into the old trap of the definition of wealth and we forget about why he is in that position. He shared a gift from inside himself, an idea that has positively impacted the world. And he was relentless about making that impact. So what I discovered was this secret. The true definition of wealth can be defined in one word. Impact. Self-determination theory says that our well-being depends on the satisfaction of three basic needs. Relatedness, competence, and autonomy. We become better human beings and happier people when we give to people that we know. Relatedness. When we see how it makes them feel. Competence. And we, when we give simply because we want to. Autonomy. And if our wealth comes from what we have access to, then first and foremost, we all have access to what I call you gems. Those things inside of you, the gems that make you uniquely you. Science tells us that you being here is a one in 400 quadrillion chance. That means that you have a specific solution, idea, lesson, or way of looking at or doing something. That is your you, Jim. I may have lost $100,000, but it didn't scare me from blessing people with my wealth. My nonprofit is currently sponsoring the installation of a well at a school in Ghana, West Africa, where kids didn't have access to water. When you embrace this new idea of wealth as impact, you are going to leave behind all of the issues about finances. You're going to leave behind the idea that Wealth is money. You're going to leave behind the stress that comes from focusing solely on the accumulation of dollars. You're going to leave behind the constant worry about finances. When you embody impact, you step into your power, your fulfillment, and your happiness. So I want you to think about one person or organization that you can help and send them a text message saying, hey, how can I help you or serve you? Because when you swing into the redefinition of wealth as impact, you activate your you gems. And when we all do this, we increase the collective wealth of the world and move into the richness of making an impact. Blessing.